Hello everybody, this is Joanny and this week I watched Mr. Harrigan's phone on Netflix which is based on a short story by Stephen King also known, I mean also titled Mr. Harrigan's phone which was released in 2020 as part of a short story collection. Netflix bought the rights to the short story that same year and Bloomhouse Productions along with Ryan Murphy produced the film. The movie was written and directed by John Lee Hancock, who also directed The Blind Side with Sandra Bullock, The Alamo, and The Highwayman, and a bunch of other movies that I didn't watch. Mr. Harrigan's Phone premiered on October 5th on Netflix, and it stars Donald Sutherland as Mr. Harrigan, a billionaire from Maine, and Jada Martell, who plays the young boy Craig who you may remember from the movie It Chapter 1 and also he was in Chapter 2. I was really looking forward to watching this film. I watched the trailer the same day that Netflix released like 30 trailers and that was the one that looked the most interesting and it looked really good. So I was looking forward to watching it but I was really disappointed. So the plot of the movie, uh, spoiler alert, I'm about to tell you the whole movie if you haven't watched the film. So, um, Mr. I mean, Crex, the boy, his mother dies, and they're at the funeral, and um, Craig is like reading something, and Mr. Harrigan happens to be there, and he sees him reading, and so then he goes to the boy's house and tells the dad that he would like to hire the boy to be his personal reader for him to come to his mansion uh, to read to him three times a week. And the dad, he's like, yeah, sure, why not? So the boy starts going to Mr. Harrigan's house three times a week to read to him. He goes after school. So time passes by and the boy is now, Craig is now in high school. He goes to a new high school and he starts getting bullied by this boy named Kenny, who was a pretty big boy. He was, the, he was probably a senior, I don't know, but... He starts picking on him for some reason. Um, and then the movie kind of goes back and forth between his life in high school and then him reading to Mr. Har uh, Harrigan every three times a week. Uh, so one Christmas, you know, everyone... Is, this is like 2003 when the new iPhones, the first iPhone came out and everyone has an iPhone. So Craig asked the dad for an iPhone for Christmas. And then the dad is like, no. Nah. But then for Christmas, the dad actually buys him the iPhone and Mr. Harrigan, it's a Har yeah, Mr. Harrigan uh, gives him a scratch ticket as a gift and he ends up winning $3,000. And with the $3,000, he buys Mr. Harrigan a phone, his own iPhone, so they could talk to each other. Nothing weird at all. <laughs> uh, so he buys him an iPhone. And then Mr. Harrigan was kind of on the fence about it. He's like, no, I don't want that phone. Radiation, yada, yada, yada. But then he gives in and then um, Craig starts teaching him how to use the phone. And he teaches him like you can read the Wall Street Journal. You can read the New York Times all on your phone. You can check your stocks, yada, yada, yada. Time passes by. One afternoon, Craig goes to read to Mr. Harrigan and Mr. Harrigan is dead. So Craig is all sad and he, like he calls his dad and that's like call 911 I'll be right over and then Mr. Harrigan leaves uh, $800,000 on a trust fund for Craig so Craig could go to college uh, and become a writer because he, he had mentioned that he wanted to be a writer so Mr. Harrigan left $800,000 to, uh, to Craig. So Craig decides to like you know he's all sad about it they went to the funeral oh wait so at the funeral um, Craig places the cell phone inside Mr. Harrigan's suit while he's laying on the casket like he goes to the casket and says his goodbyes so he places his cell Mr. Uh, Gar the cell phone he bought for Mr. Harrigan inside his suit pocket so now he gets the money and he like he's all sad about it so he sends he sends him a message like a text saying thank you that he wishes he was still here and then he the next day he receives a text from Mr. Harrigan's phone on uh, he rec yeah he receives a text from Mr. Harrigan's phone hold on let me drink <laughs> so he receives a text 
And he's like all freaked out. He tells his dad and, and the dad is like, oh, it's probably like a glitch or something. Don't worry about it. But he's like freaking out. Oh no, we bury him alive. Then in high school, the bully, Kenny, gets expelled because he was selling weed on campus. And then he blames Craig. So at a dance, the bully um, attacks Craig. Yeah. So at a dance, the bully attacks Craig and beats him up. And then Craig like goes to his room crying. And he's like all upset. And he calls Mr. Harrigan's phone. And he's like, "Oh, I wish you were." You know, he tells him what happened. He, this bully's like driving him crazy and l making his life a living hell. And he's like, "I wish you were here. I, you know, I just wish uh, I could ask you for advice on what to do." I mean, the boy has a dad. He could ask the dad, but he called Mr. Harrigan's phone as you know, kind of to vent. Then the next day. Kenny, the bully, dies. He like falls off the window or something and dies. Mind you, this is like 50 minutes into the movie. This is the first time someone dies. 50 minutes into the movie. So Kenny, not Kenny, Miss, what's his name? Craig. Yeah, so Craig panics. He's like, oh my God, it was Mr. Harrigan's ghost. So he goes to the cemetery and calls, he goes to Mr. Harrigan's grave he calls the cell phone and he hears the grief from like the ground and I'm thinking this is now like a, maybe a month or two after Mr. Harrigan is dead and that phone has been down there for so long how does how is the battery still working that's what I want to know because this is like the first iPhone and the battery still working and somehow like how deep was he buried down there that, that he could hear the phone ringing I don't know but he called just to make sure like oh my god it's the ghost that's doing this. So he calls, he hears the phone, and he freaks out. So he's freaked out now, and he goes to the Apple store, and just, he just, like, upgrades his phone just to make sure and just to be safe. But he still, he keeps his old phone, and, and he leaves it in his room. Now he's going to college. He's in college, and he finds out that this teacher, his favorite teacher, who was really kind to him when Kenny was bullying him, died. And she died cause, because she got hit by a drunk driver, and the drunk driver got away they just because he was some rich boy they just sent him to rehab he didn't go to jail so uh craig is really upset about it and he goes back to town to the funeral and he goes to his house he goes to his house and calls mr harrigan on the phone on the old phone and he's like oh he he hit her and please like i want him dead that's so unfair he got away with it fast forward for a couple of days the drunk driver is found dead at the um, at the rehab facility. He's dead. And then um, Craig is all, oh my God, how did this happen? So he bribes one of the workers from the, um, the facility, the rehab facility, to tell him what happened. He finds out that the drunk driver shoved some shampoo down his throat along with some soap. It was the same soap that the teacher used, apparently. I don't know how he knew that, but it was the same soap that the teacher used. And, um, uh, what's his name? Craig gets all freaked out about it. He goes to the grave crying. Long story short, then he throws the phone. That This is the end. He throws the phone into a river. And he says, oh, if I ever die, please bury me with um don't put anything in my pockets and that's the movie that's the end <laughs> uh i was re i was really disappointed with this movie i thought it was going to be good and nothing exciting happens for like an hour until they kill the um people start dying and nobody knows how they die well it's like all accidental but i, I was so mad about this movie <laughs> You know, they didn't explain how this this was happening. They, there wasn't a conclusion to it except Craig throwing the phone away. Uh, no one knows if it was Mr. Harrigan's ghost that was doing all the killing. I don't know. This ending was not really the best. I didn't read the short story, so I don't know if uh, the short story has the same ending as the movie because, you know, sometimes uh movies don't stick to the source material they just want to rush through it or just get the name of the person who wrote it and stephen king is a famous person so they were like let's just use his name because people are gonna watch this movie anyways 
and just write whatever we want and say it's based on his story, on his short story. But then again, Stephen King apparently is not um, good with endings either because that was one of the jokes on it, it chapter two. One of the characters was a writer, one of the older kids grew up to be a writer and he was in, I think I read somewhere that it was like, that was based on Stephen King because people are always telling him that the ending is never good. Anyways, the point is this movie, the ending was not really satisfying or the whole movie was dragging. It took an hour for it to pick up. The pacing was also really slow. This movie is an hour and 44 minutes and it felt like a three hour movie. I felt like they could have cut a lot of the beginning and just kind of skip to where the murder started happening and I think figuring it out if he did it or not what would have been a more interesting movie because I this movie was not it well the good thing is that you know the acting was good all of the actors were really good the bully um, the bully was intense Jaden that boy uh, he's really talented I really like his subtleness I thought he did pretty good so the acting is good, but the rest of the movie, it's like, maybe give this actors different material to work with. Overall, I did not like this movie. I would give it one star, one, one and a half star out of five, just because of the acting. <laughs> that was the only thing good about it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this review. Comment down below and tell me if you watched Mr. Harrigan's phone and what your thoughts were because I hated this movie. Uh, I watched it, I didn't hate it. It's just, it wasn't good and I didn't enjoy it and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone because I don't want Netflix thinking that people love this. Actually, it was number one. It was number one the first week that it uh, premiered. So they'll probably come up with a second one. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. It will help me grow and like this video, which will tell the algorithm that uh, this is a good video and will push it to more people. Until next time, bye.